Welcome to episode 241 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. It's the first day of fall. I got my special fall hat on, and today we're going to talk about why it is always hard to do meaningful work and make meaningful change. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So today is one of the, it is the most unique day I've had in years. And the reason why is because today is a Friday when I'm recording this. It's the first day of fall. It is beautiful in upstate New York, by the way. When I say beautiful, I mean like in the 50s. It's breezy. It's a little crisp. I got a hoodie on. I got, I mean, maybe maybe the the beanie hat is a little overkill, but I just couldn't help myself. I'm like a kid at Christmas time because fall is the best time of year. And it's so unique today because... I took a day during the work week, I stepped away from everything and everybody, and I said, I'm going to take some time to work on me, this guy right here. It all started, I mean, I've been running hard for a long time. It's probably been years, honestly, since I've done this, and that is not healthy at all, especially for my personality. Um, a lot of people probably think I'm like an extrovert because of the way I make content, the way I'm at live events. I thrive when I'm around people, but I recharge when I buy myself, turn total antisocial. I don't want to talk to people. Um, I don't want to take calls. Um, I don't want anyone to need me. And that starts to actually fill my tank. And so this week I came home and my wife, Sarah, she looked at me, she was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? I'm like, nothing's wrong. Everything's fine. We have all these great things going on, all this opportunity. I was like, but, but I just kind of feel paralyzed by it all. Um, I kind of just feel like I, I'm walking around with like a glazed look on my face. I'm in my office and there are things to do. And instead of like leaning into one of the things and one of the opportunities we have, I find myself like packing up, like breaking down a box that's in my office and finding other excuses to do similar things. And Sarah, in all of her <laughs> infinite wisdom, she knows exactly what she's doing. She knows me very well. She's like, you need to just another day to go walk around New York City. And what she means by that is... um. You know, years ago, the first time I ever took a day to myself, I literally got on a plane from Syracuse, New York. I flew to New York City, landed in JFK, got on the, the subway, let me off uh, Midtown right underneath Madison Square Garden where Penn Station is, and I just had no agenda. And I just walked literally 20 miles all day long up and down and across that island at the white noise of people going all over the place and horns and, and people I don't know motivated doing things that I don't care about or don't require me. I mean, that just kind of turns it, turns it on for me. But all that to say, today I stepped away. She was like, you need to step away. And she pushed and she encouraged. And I was like, but this person, but, but this thing's going on, but that thing's going on. She said the most loving words that she could say to me in that moment. You ready? You're not as important as you think you are. Ouch. It sounds kind of harsh at the beginning, but what she's saying is your team is great. Other people can move things. What would happen if you got sick? You can step out and the world will keep spinning. Your things will keep spinning. Guess what? Hurt my ego for a second, but she was right. So what I did was um, there's a great little lodge uh, ski area a little bit south of where I'm in Syracuse. It's called Greek Peak. So I got this room that I'm in right now, and if you're not watching, you're just listening. This is just a room that has a table, a little kitchen, a bathroom. I got this room, and I just left this morning, and I took the long way to drive out here, and it's beautiful, and it's crisp outside, and I was like, I'm not going to put any pressure or constraints on what I need to do today. I'm just going to do it. So what I did was I sat down at breakfast on the way here. I read my favorite book called The Freedom of Self-Forgetfulness by Timothy Keller. I read that book once a year. I should read it twice a year. And um, it just it just breaks down um, my, my heart and my mindset and the, the ego that rises up saying like you always trying to find a way to, to make yourself fulfilled. And making yourself fulfilled is actually not going to happen, right? Unless you have your identity outside of any a thing or accomplishment you can have. I'm a pretty motivated person that always looks to accomplishment. So that kind of like sets me free when I, when I go through things. And when I, when I think of things that way that I find my identity elsewhere. And for me personally, I know I don't usually talk about this. I'm going to talk about it now, maybe because I'm in this mood, but I feel like the identity I have, 
I'm a child of God. I was created to serve other people. I was created to, to promote that to be the, the good in the world and to be a soft place to land and be an encourager um, because that has been done for me. So I'm in this zone and in this mode today. I get back to, to, my, to, my, uh, to my room here, walked around, did a couple things, and then I grabbed this notebook um, that I got at a trade show somewhere, a little moleskin. I never opened it. I opened it. Thanks, uh, dealer.com. Little, little unsolicited ad there. Thank you. I picked this up at a trade show booth. I think at Virginia Auto Dealer Association, where I grabbed this. And today was the day I cracked it open. And uh, something, about a, something about a fresh moleskin notebook that just gets it going. And so I went through this, and I just literally started to write a page out for every member of my family. I wrote one out for Sarah, and then my son Miles, and Brooklyn, and Elise, and our little Jaden. And I just started to write down and go through my observations of their personalities, the great qualities that they've been gifted with, the things that they need from me in order to really see them reach their fullest. And that is what I've spent a big portion of my day doing. Total, I mean, I've never done this before. And I realized you know, with all the business things I have going on and all the great things that are going that I've never really sat down to like, to love on and really be thoughtful about the the most important things that I've been given as a man to steward in my life. These, these people, these family members, these, these kind of like part of my hearts, they're going to be with me forever. Businesses come and go. Industry comes and goes. The economies come and go. Opportunities come and go. But I'm realizing like I've never been thoughtful about who they are and what they need. Now, it doesn't mean I ignore them. I love them. I spend a lot of time with them. I do cherish who they are and we spend a lot of time talking about it and laughing about it. But I realize that the, the meaningful things that are going to come, the meaningful work that needs to be done, is actually hard work. It actually comes with spending the time and energy to write things down and be thoughtful and taking time away from the hustle and the bustle and the rush to get it done. Now next, I have a few hours left today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean into all the business units that we have going on, all the opportunities, all the people and the opportunities and the, the industries that, that I want to serve that are a part of my heart as well and a part of that enthusiasm. I'm about to lean into that. But just the thought of meaningful change never coming easy. Meaningful change always requires hard work. It always requires you to stop the trajectory that you are on every single day to stop the motion, to stop the distractions, to stop the sound. And sometimes that's the hardest work there is because it requires you to put your ego aside and realize you're, you're not that important. It requires you to take that, that mentality out that if I don't do this, no one else will. And it's just unhealthy. And for a motivated person and a lot of people in, in this clarity compressed audience or people that, you know, are connected with me on social or in real life, tend to be a really motivated, entrepreneurial, business-minded, progress-minded audience. And that is a beautiful thing. That is a gift. Don't ever lose that. But just sharing a little perspective, a little clarity that I got today, that is it's so easy to avoid the meaningful work, the meaningful work of meaningful change that is hard in our own hearts, in our own lives to calibrate ourselves. People will call it self-care right? Self-care is a good thing. I tend to tend to uh, steer away from it because it seems a little light and fluffy to me. Um, oh, I got to have self-care day, right? But the truth is taking care of yourself is the most important thing if your heart is truly oriented towards taking care of other people. It's easy to go the way of like over self-caring yourself. Oh, I got to take care of myself. But it really is an important part of taking care of other people. And if I'm not healthy, if I'm not focused, um, if I'm not thoughtful, if I'm not compassionate, if I'm not observant, and guess what? Everybody that looks to me to be that way, I'm failing them all. So that is episode 241. I'm excited it's the first day of fall. I'm excited I'm wearing this, this ski hat because um, I love it. And I love this weather. I love this temperature. I think the, the changing of the seasons is really going to have a, a part in my heart this year specifically with a, a changing in the seasons, hopefully of thoughtfulness and the hard work of doing meaningful things and making meaningful change. Thank you for spending some time with me this week. I hope you make some meaningful change and I'll see you next week.